I'm now pleased to introduce Rochelle Hendricks uh, as New Jersey's first Secretary of Higher Education. Secretary Hendricks has more than 20 years of experience working on education issues in the Garden State. Appointed to the cabinet level post by Governor Chris Christie in May, she had served previously as Acting Commissioner of New Jersey's Department of Education. Prior to that assignment, Hendricks had served in the Department of Education as Assistant Commissioner for the Division of School Effectiveness and Choice, overseeing key reform initiatives and areas. Hendricks has also uh, served in the Department of Education in various other capacities. Prior to joining the staff at the Department of Education, she worked for over 15 years at Princeton in numerous capacities, including Assistant Dean of Students, Director of Educational Opportunities Program, and Interim Director of the Women's Program. Uh, Secretary Hendricks. First of all, let me say how pleased I am to be here on behalf of Governor Christie and I would dare say the higher education community as a whole. Uh, to Governor Kane, who has long been one of my heroes, I think he knows that, uh, and I see him as a model for public service and how to get it right. Uh, so I'm privileged to be on the stage with you again, sir. And to Mayor Booker, who uh, has challenged us and sort of called up the best in us and reminded us, the two of them together, of who we are as a people and as a nation and the challenges we have ahead of us in higher education. To my colleague and dear friend, President Joel Bloom. President Joel Bloom. What an honor and a privilege it is to be here for your inauguration as the eighth president of NJIT, this extraordinary institution. I'm going to be brief, and since uh, the two speakers before me have laid down the gauntlet, and I'm trusting that you are not in the cemetery, that you are looking to the North Star, and you have the good sense to get up if the nail is beginning to stick you in an uncomfortable place. So I'm going to give a slightly different twist um, and be uh, somewhat brief. And if I stick to my notes, I will definitely be. If I don't, we may be in trouble. It is a daunting, complex, and wonderfully exciting time to be part of higher education, and especially here in New Jersey. You've heard about how critical it is for us to do the extraordinary thing, the amazing. And I know that in New Jersey we can because we, we've done it, quite frankly, with very little support for about two decades now. But the good news is, is the current administration has made higher education a priority. And there are some telltale signs. Some of the recent landmark legislation, including the restructuring of medical education in the state of New Jersey, the $750 million bond referendum, and as Governor Kane said, get out and vote, vote, and tell everybody else you know, vote, vote, and by the way, vote yes. In addition to that, there's the enactment of multiple pieces of legislation to support public-private partnerships to also help address the infrastructure needs of our colleges and universities. And we're also pleased that we've managed to provide some increases in the overall budget, and particularly in the case of student support. In a knowledge economy, education is, in fact, the new currency by which nations maintain economic competitiveness and prosperity. I propose that we have an unprecedented opportunity, because when there's unprecedented challenges, there's unprecedented opportunity, to do things dramatically better, but also dramatically different. In fact, I dare say we have a moral, social, and economic imperative to do so. Together, all of higher education, and particularly NJIT, I say to you, we have a unique opportunity to transform our education system in ways that will resonate for decades to come, and perhaps in ways we have never dared to think of previously. As we seek from the state level new partnerships with industry, as we strengthen the ties between higher education and the economy of our state, I cannot think of a better partner in this effort than Dr. Bloom and NJIT, and he's already evidenced that consistently during the period of time that I've been in office and that he's been in office. 
It's been a pretty exciting first year for me, and I think quite an awesome year for you, my friend. Dr. Bloom is an innovator. He's a visionary leader with deep experience, boundless energy, and enthusiasm. I would also describe him as the leader of the three Ps, perspicacity, principle, and passion. And I should add a fourth, now that I think about it, persistence. More than two decades ago, when both of us worked in the Department of Education during the Kane era, Dr. Bloom demonstrated his commitment then to ensuring the highest quality of education for all students, regardless of background. He was committed then and he's committed now to not just beating the odds that stand in the way of progress, but changing the odds so that everybody can benefit. Today, as president of NGIT, his responsibilities have grown exponentially since those first years we met at the Department of Ed. He now leads an institution that is receiving national recognition as a leader in research. With its multifaceted mission of education, research, service, and economic development, NJIT is well positioned to play a lead role in meeting the emerging needs of our state and our nation. The university's research program is already among the fastest growing in the country it ranks among the top 10 technological universities for research expenditure. The university's community outreach and economic development programs include, and you've heard both Governor Kane and Mayor Booker reference the Enterprise Development Center, New Jersey's first and the largest small business incubator, one of the top 25 in the nation, focusing on high technology companies and minority owned businesses. Further, NJIT, these are bragging rights, I like to brag about our institution, ranked in the nation's top tier of national research universities according to the U.S. News and World Report's 2011 Annual Guide to America's Best Colleges. And just to make sure that everybody knows that's here today, Bloomberg Business Week survey of U.S. colleges ranked NJIT in the top 10% nationally for return on investment and classify the university as one of four higher education best buys in our state. And I dare say to MIT, move over. NJIT is coming through. The value and importance of NJIT's role in our state's economic future cannot be underestimated or overstated. As we move forward in partnership to retool and rebuild New Jersey's economy, I know that I can count on Dr. Bloom and the NJIT family to help us advance the cause. For Dr. Bloom has consistently demonstrated bold and creative ideas, and just as importantly, a thoughtful and thorough implementation of the same. He is a caring and committed person who demonstrates consistently respect for all that he has the pleasure of working with and all of us who have the pleasure of working with him. I thank him in advance for continuing that level of full engagement in the city of Newark, in the state of New Jersey, and in our nation as we work together towards real, lasting reform. To my friend and colleague of more than 25 years, I say congratulations and we've got a lot of work to do, and we're going to do it together. And to this Board of Trustees, I thank you for the wisdom that you've demonstrated in selecting Joel to lead this institution in this century at this time. And to the entire NJIT family and friends, let's do the impossible, because together we can do it. And I will leave you with this quote. There is uh, an old proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Let's go together.